Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching. In last week's How to Speed Paint Cadians video, I didn't use a single model with a helmetless head. So I thought with the second squad, it'd be interesting to take a lot of the helmetless heads and do something different with the hair colours. Typically, I will do one hair colour across every model in the unit to speed things up and also keep it fairly plain and simple. So it's just interesting to do a little bit of an experiment. We're going to see three different kind of hairstyles. So like a dark brown, a blondy brown, and then quite a vibrant one on the mohawk heads. I'm going to do it in two styles. So a standard painting scheme with normal paints, if you would call it that. And the second one is this one we're going to start off, which is a contrast painting scheme. Now for the contrast, we need to base coat the hair in an off-white colour, because that's how contrast paint works. Just being uh, careful to cover every last part of that metallic hair. Now while they're often drying, it's time to start on what you would say is the normal painting scheme. Now this is really my default uh, scheme, this flat brown colour. If you ever really see me doing hair on models, I will tend to go for a dark brown, because it works well with wash stage and, and keeps it like a little bit grim dark. So taking that flat brown colour across all the areas of the head, Similar to when we did the contrast preparation, you want to make sure you're covering all the parts of the head because I've undercoated these in a metallic uh, colour. And obviously if you miss section, you don't really want metallic showing through. Now moving on to the sort of blonde hair scheme, we're taking a green ochre colour from Vallejo, which is has a slight greeny tinge to it as long as that blonde tinge, so it'll build a good base coat up. Uh, for the next stage we're going to do. Now obviously you don't have to use the exact colours I'm doing. Essentially when you're doing hair or anything like that, you need to take a dark base of colour to, to start with and then think of a, a colour that's slightly lighter than that for the later highlight stages you're going to see. But if you do want to use the exact colours, obviously they're on the screen and at the end of the video I'm going to list them all together. So that's the blonde one and now a mohawk head just screams out for a nice vibrant colour. So with this one I've chosen a blue and taken a Vallejo flat blue and just covering every part of that mohawk. Because obviously you could do these brown or whatever but you know I think if, you, if you've got a mohawk on the battlefield you're going to go for a bright colour. Now just I've left this kind of mistake in here so you can see as I'm painting there with quite a thin brush I do catch the skin. If you do that it's always better to try and fix it straight away because while the paint's still wet Take a bit of water on your brush, which I went back to get a little bit more there, and just use that water to take that paint off that skin area. If you leave it to dry, it's a lot harder to cover up later using the skin colour than it is just to clean it off straight away. So always good to show your mistakes. Now that is it for the first stage of the standard colour. So the contrast paint base coat has had time to dry, so that white has dried. You don't want to be putting the contrast paint onto that base of the hair if it's still wet because it will go horribly wrong. So let's get on with that. You'll see here two contrast paints. We've taken uh, the snake bite leather, which is a darker one, and the skeleton hole, which is lighter. And they're both really a dark brown base. Now, what I'm trying to do on the hair here is take the snake bite leather and put it into the recesses. So you see here around kind of the, the front of the hair where it hits the skin, where the roots of the hair would be a little bit darker. But I'm also putting it into stripes and things where you can see the hair has been tied into like a top knot, trying to put it in areas that it makes sense that it might show off as darker. Then I'm taking the skeleton hoard and putting it in between the stripes I've painted and then going back again you see there putting the darker one at the base of the hair and really is a bit of experimentation to try and blend together those dark stripes and the light stripes. Now this does come off slightly uh, of a lighter blonde than a dark brown that I did the standard paints but I think it really works and is definitely a darker tone than the light blonde hair we're going to see next and fairly quick to do as you've seen there. Now this is more your pale blonde, so similar method, we're taking the, the darker colours, so we're using the Nasdreg yellow and a Bad Moon yellow, two very dark, uh, a dark yellow and a light yellow, and I'm just dropping on the Nasdreg yellow into the, again, recessed areas. Now this hair um, style here is kind of blowing in the wind and the spikes almost sticking out, so I'm trying to take the dark into the bottom of the spikes and then taking the light uh, yellow into the tops of the spikes and again merging them together around that hair to then make a, a variety of the patterns and it is a very very different yellow to the sort of dark yellow we've already done. So quite quick and easy to do, I don't really think there's a wrong way of doing this but I would say try and put the darker colours into the recesses and the lighter colours into the raised areas um, to make a slightly more natural hairstyle but again fairly quick and easy and then you can just blend it together on the top as we've seen there. Now again going for a vibrant colour now I don't have any contrast blues because I don't have the full range of contrast paints so I thought I'd go for a red uh, and again exactly the same method using the volupus pink here and the flesh terrors red and putting the brighter colour on the very top of the mohawk you've seen there and then the dark colour and then merging them together again. So again quite a quick and simple technique 
uh, and really quite I think effective and it's just that little bit of fun um, nothing really more to say I suppose with that contrast section other than uh, again when you're doing it just make sure the, the white layer done dries thoroughly and just have fun and have a play and it does highlight to me that you could use any of the contrast paints again two similar ones a darker and a lighter to do this exact same effect now when all the paints thoroughly dried you can see here I've only done one layer on the standard color but we're now putting a sepia wash over the entire model and if you have watched my how to speed paint Cajuns you'll know that this is the stage that we do after all the base coats are completed so this hair scheme was done following the flow of that speed painting Cadians now we're doing the same thing over the contrast painted hair you can see there, this is one of the contrast painted models and then we'll move on and do the next stages so the next stages on the standard hair colors like we said before it's taking a lighter color than your initial base coat now it would be very tempted here to just dry brush that light color over the top of the hair but what I'm trying to do is take that light color and put it along the flow of the hair that's molded into the model so we're doing a very a gentle edge highlight you'll see not uh, it's not super contrasted in terms of how much brighter it is now I'm taking a bone white color over the blonde hair and I think this is the one that works really really well this is not a hair color I typically do uh, but I think it's worked out absolutely the best because I love the contrast on those strands of hair between that sort of um, ochre and then the bone white and I think it really stands out quite vibrant the first one the dark brown you saw is how I typically do hair and I don't like an over highlighted uh, color scheme generally I kind of go a bit more grim dark but I particularly like this blonde hair and it would be one I'll be using again I think the uh, bright blue hair on the mohawk taking an electric brew a very vibrant bright blue and again just the end of the brush just to put some of those highlights onto the models there now let's take a look at the finished models so the dark brown hair this is my typical scheme uh, it works well you can see a couple of the highlights and things in there and fits in with the military aesthetic a little bit more the light blonde hair with the standard scheme one of my favorites i think this has worked really well you can really see the strands of hair pulling into that ponytail there so I particularly liked it look a vibrant bright blue mohawk who doesn't like that and was quite easy to do now in terms of easy to do the contrast paints i think work really well we did nothing extra with these after that kind of wash layer so i think this looked really nice not quite as dark brown as the uh, my standard style the kind of bright blonde I think the standard paint scheme worked better for the bright blonde definitely um which is my favorite the mohawk worked really really well so uh, two different ways of doing hair there i think some really different effects that is six totally different uh, hairstyles all fairly easy to do actually and all quite enjoyable so hopefully you enjoyed that if you did like comment subscribe uh, plenty more cadians to come on the channel so uh, hopefully i'll see you on another video